So have you been thinking about getting into ultra shoes for hiking and backpacking but just can't make the decision? Well stick around because in this video I'm going to share with you the good and the bad from my experiences with ultra shoes. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jason. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about my Ultra Olympus and Lone Peak shoes. I have owned seven pairs. These are the remaining three that I have left that I'm still currently wearing. And I have exceeded 2,500 miles hiking, backpacking, running with those seven pairs of shoes. Now I have done a detailed review on the Lone Peak 4.5s and my first pair of Olympus 4s and I will link those in the description below and also at the end of the video if you want to see more details on each one of these shoes individually. I kind of have some different opinions about these Ultra shoes since my last reviews and I'd like to share with you some of those details to maybe help you make a better decision whether they're going to be the right shoe for you out hiking and backpacking. So let's dive right in. All right, first off, let's talk about a few of the things that I really like about the Olympus 4s. This rigid toe cap, I love it. If you are prone to kicking roots and rocks on the trail, this is a really good option for you because it's really rigid and I like how the uh, toe cap stays glued. On the Lone Peaks, they're going to peel away from you after 30 or 40 miles. It's happened on every version. I know they remedied that problem on the Lone Peak 5. They've actually added some stitching there, so it shouldn't be a problem anymore. Um, I've shoot gooed these, but it's still coming undone. Um, they were completely down, so that is a major problem on the earlier versions of the four, of the Lone Peaks. So, something else I really like about the Olympus is the Mega Grip Vibram rubber around the outside. It's really grippy, but I don't like this foam material on the inside of the shoe. Um, it does wear down fast. You can really see on my earlier version here that has over 500 miles on them. There's not much there. They are pretty much flat. And I have had stubble or stalks in these bean fields that I'm in right now penetrate this foam. And there's currently one in here right now. I'll give you a close up of this. But there is a piece of bean stubble up in this shoe. I tried to pull it out with a pair of pliers and I can't get it. I'm going to have to push it down from the inside of the shoe. If you look really close here, inside uh, there is the top of the bean stubble there. I'm going to have to push that out from the top and hopefully I can get a hold of it and pull that out. So there's no rock plate and no rock guard in these shoes like there is in the Lone Peaks. They would really benefit from having the solid Vibram rubber throughout the entire shoe instead of this foam material because it's definitely prone to getting things poking through there and hitting your foot. If you are prone to tripping and over sticks, rocks and roots, I would not recommend the Lone Peaks because you are going to damage your toenails. Now, not to say that it can't happen in Lone Peaks because I've lost probably oh, five or six toenails over the last year in Olympus shoes, but I was jogging. So you can really cause some damage when you kick things while you're jogging. Next, I gotta mention this glorious 33 millimeter stack height of the Olympus 4s. I love it. If you're wanting to put down some long, hard miles and not have worn out feet at the end of the day, this might be the shoe for you. Now, I know it's not for everybody. Some people want to feel more connected to the trail and have that thinner stack height like the Lone Peaks. And if I didn't have a minor case of plantar fasciitis, I would probably like these a lot more, but I just have really sore feet at the end of the day when I wear the Lone Peaks. Next, I really like the Gator Trap system. They got the hook in the front and the Velcro in the back, all ready to go for gators. For me, they have been true to size right out of the box and trail ready. No time needed for breaking them in. I can open the box, put them on, and go do a 20 mile day and have no problems whatsoever. One thing I really like about the Olympus 4s that I mentioned in my prior review is this thin tongue. I didn't think I'd really like it, but my foot sweats less with it. I think it's a great idea. Um, I thought I really needed that padded tongue, but and it still doesn't bother me, but I definitely sweat more when I'm wearing the Lone Peaks because of the padded tongue. So these are pretty nice and it stays in place. It doesn't shift much side to side. It stays right where you lock it down. One thing a lot of people wonder about are the insoles. Now, I've always just used the stock insoles and have been perfectly happy with them. I know a lot of people like to put something like Super Feet or Sole insoles inside here. Um, I've never had any issues with the stock ones. I really like them. 
However, I did reach out to Ultra and ask them what they would recommend. And even though they don't have one themselves from their company, they did recommend two other companies that carry aftermarket insoles that will fit well in their shoes. And I will put those down in the description box below if you want to check those out. All right, now I want to quickly mention some of the cons of Ultra Shoes. And first and foremost, I got to mention the durability issue. When I did my review of my first pair of Olympus 4s, I, I raved about how well they were holding up after 400 miles. But shortly thereafter, they just completely fell apart on me. I sliced the old Olympus 4s up good on this last fall I just had. So that answers my question about how durable that mesh is. I'm gonna give you some close-up shots of these shoes, but you can see all around them, there is shoe goo and holes around the shoe goo where they've ripped again. And even right here, you can see I had to stitch them. That was a huge hole, like three inches long by a half inch wide. The material, the mesh completely pulled away from the rubber right here. And I used some of my son's fishing line, <laughs> high quality, um, heavyweight fishing line to stitch those back together. And then I put shoe goo over it and they looked great for a while, but then the shoe goo just starts coming off. Hey, I can't believe the stitching's still holding up. They look pretty good, but I mean, these shoes are just getting tore up. But, uh, you know, I still wear these daily around the farm just to walk around in. But you can see on the bottom, the rubber sole, like I showed earlier, is just completely worn away. They're almost completely flat. And the uh, foam in the stack, the 33 millimeter stack height, is just super, super squishy and soft. Way too much give. I think your feet, my feet would just be totally wrecked at the end of the day if I went out and tried to hike 20 miles on these just because there's no good support there anymore. But they still feel comfortable. I have over 500 miles on these. I don't think they're good for 500 miles. My honest opinion is 400 max. And even those 400 miles were probably half on road. So if you're beating these things up on the Appalachian Trail, for example, you're probably lucky to get 350 miles out of them. That's my honest opinion. So they're just not very durable, but they're so darn comfortable and I just can't quit buying them. I love these things. Got about 150 miles on these. Perfect condition. Not one thing wrong with them yet other than uh, having that soft foam rubber on the bottom where things can easily penetrate. I don't like that. The other thing I can't stand about Olympus shoes is the price point. How can Ultra charge $170 for a shoe that can barely hold up for 400 miles? In my mind, they should be priced around 120, 130 bucks. I would gladly pay that. But since I can't find a replacement to these shoes, I'm gonna continue to buy them. I can't wait to see what the next version is going to be like. Now, on the 4.5s, there's some great deals out there. I think I've seen them for $84, $87. So if you're wanting to try a pair of Little Peak 4.5s, there's some great prices out there right now. And another thing I forgot to mention about the 4.5s is I wear an 11, but I feel like after putting 250 miles on these or whatever I have on them, they have shrunk. My toes feel like they hit the end of the shoe really bad. So. If I was to buy 4.5s again, I think I would size up at least a half size and go with 11 and halfs because they definitely have shrunk on me a little bit. And I'm afraid that if I kick the rock, I'm going to really damage my big toe. All right, so what is my final opinion on Ultra Shoes? Yes, they have some problems. It's not the perfect shoe. I feel like the perfect shoe is yet to be made. However, I can't find an alternative that I like compared to these Olympus 4s. They are so comfortable. I can put high miles on them and it doesn't tear my feet up. I've tried a pair of Hoka's on, several pairs, and other shoes, and I just cannot get past how they don't fit my toes right. They don't have a foot-shaped toe box like this to allow your toes to spread out, splay out naturally. You just can't beat the toe box, the foot box on Ultra Shoes. If you're looking to get six, seven, eight hundred miles out of a pair of shoes, you're not going to find it in ultra shoes. You're going to have to look elsewhere. However, if you're wanting to put down some long, hard miles and not have your feet absolutely destroyed at the end of the day and want a shoe that fits perfectly right out of the box, ultras might be the right shoe for you. Alrighty, if you have any questions or comments regarding the discussion I've had here today on ultra shoes, please put them down below in the comment section and let me know what your favorite backpacking shoe is. I'm always open to the possibility of changing shoes in the future and trying something new. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'm Jason Wish, wishing you a great time on your next adventure.